Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of my Pokemon Platinum Let's Play. I am Magnificent Entertainer, Bulba Garden's multimedia executive. In the last episode, we explored Route 226 to the east and arrived here in the survival area. In this episode, we'll be exploring the survival area and Route 227, which is to the north of Route 226. In between episodes, I didn't do terribly much, but I did get Juniper back in the party, since I no longer need Fapa in my party. Um, and I also bought a few more Super Repels at the convenient Pokemart over here. Um, do keep in mind... Uh, that this particular Pokemart doesn't actually have anything particularly special about it. There's only one clerk, and I don't think you can actually um, get anything useful. Uh, and that guy is talking about Stark Mountain, which is where we are ultimately looking to end up before the end of this episode. Anyway, we also took a look last episode at this strange building over here. We heard someone in the Pokemon Center say that they've seen gym leaders going in and out of this house. Alas, it doesn't look like we can do anything about that right now, but we will, in the future, see what that building is all about. And this is the survival area staging point. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, but hooray for that. Uh, you can see that there's a house down there. Let's hop down that ledge, talk to the little camera guy over here. Yes, you're a cameraman, obviously. Have you seen that TV program, Search for the Red Gyarados? You! So you're the same guy that was standing outside of Lake Valor and preventing me from going in there all that time. I... And you let Team Galactic in also. Speaking of, we should probably check in on them at some point. Eh, maybe next episode. Anyway, um, bottom line... I don't like you, and I'm saying that on camera. Yes, I think that has done enough justice. Anyway, this karate man in here. There's a move that doubles in power with the Pokemon uh, using it as poison, paralyzed, or burned. I've got the technical machine for it right here. You want it? Yes, the TM42 Facade. Which is, again, you know, that... that is exactly what he said. The power doubles if your Pokemon is poisoned, paralyzed, or burned. It's actually not a terrible move for Heracross, all things considered, if you have something like a Toxic Orb or a, uh, a Flame Orb on it, because then you're automatically getting that uh, Guts boost, you're getting the increased power of Facade. So that's actually an interesting thing to consider, plus Facade, I mean, Facade would have more power than Return at that point. The only thing being, of course, it's a normal type move, so, you know, there are disadvantages to that. But, you know, Heracross being part rock type, or sorry, part fighting type, has fighting type moves like close combat that it can use to take out uh, steel or rock types which resist normal type moves. And then it does learn an array of other moves that it can use to deal with ghost type Pokemon. Uh, my bag is full of items. Dreams are not particularly helpful to me. Uh, but I think that's just about it. Well, actually, I'm pretty sure there's there's more items somewhere around here. Uh, let's see. Well, first of all, uh, I did mention that there was an area of this place that we could explore from Route 226. So let's actually go there. And not forget to activate a repel. Oh, I think one thing... You know, I, I didn't mention this before, but one thing that I really like about... Um, the TMs in this generation. So in Gen 1 through Gen 3, uh, the TMs were pretty much all, you know, 1 through 50. And every generation, the TMs would be different depending on, you know, what... Uh, depending on what game you were playing. So the TMs in Gen 1 were different from the TMs in Gen 2. Uh, grab a red shard over there. The TMs in Gen 2 were different from the TMs in Gen 3. You know, obviously there was some overlap, uh, but there wasn't complete and total overlap, so you could still end up with, um, 
you could still end up with TMs that were the same between generations, but different, um, you know, in, in other games. Uh, and the thing about Gen 3 to Gen 4 uh, is that you actually have, uh, you know, the same TMs, the, the first 50 TMs remain unchanged from Gen 3, and then, you know, they added on, I don't remember if it was 48, 49 TMs, uh, but they added, so everything past TM50 is new to this game, but it's all the same before that. So TM1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way through 50 are exactly the same. That's how, when I was migrating my Pokemon from Gen 3, I could actually include held item TMs. Anyway, this guy is a move tutor. And you can see there's a psychic over here. Uh, I started living here where no one could reach me without using rock climb. I came because I got sick and tired of seeing people. Yeah, that makes sense. When I stopped seeing people, I began to look forward to visitors. Where one lives can change people and Pokemon. That's what I'm saying. Anyway, this is the last move tutor. If we take a look over here, uh, you can see that he teaches the moves Mud Slap, Roll Out, Super Power, Iron Head, Aqua Tail, Gastro Acid, Endeavor... Uh, which is a move that will bring your opponent down to the same HP that you have. Uh, it is very common in the Fear Radata, uh, where it's got Focus Band or Focus... Whichever one leaves you with 1 HP if you're hit from full HP. Uh, then you use Endeavor, then you use Quick Attack, and Bye Bye Opponent. Um, hooray. Outrage, which is a 100 power dragon type move that locks you into using it for a few turns and then confuses you. Ancient power, signal beam, earth power is an interesting move. I don't remember if it's 80 power or 90 power, uh, but it's a special ground type move, which is interesting. Gunk shot over here is a 120 power physical poison type move. It's relatively inaccurate 5 pp twister is horrible seed bomb is a good physical grass type move if you had something like a, a torterra and you didn't want to use uh wood hammer because of the recoil iron defense bounce and heat wave i wonder if anything i have can learn heat wave probably not and i probably wouldn't want them to um yeah i don't think any of these pokemon can learn heat wave i know some flying types can learn Heat Wave, like Honchkrow and, and Crobat can both learn Heat Wave. Uh, and I think that's because the, the Japanese translation, or the, the, the Japanese name for it, uh, has something to do with wind. So it, it seems like it's something that, that flying types can learn. Um, I thought there was going to be another hidden item around here. Uh, or I should say, a hidden item around here. Um, I guess I was wrong? Or maybe it's just a little bit further this way. It doesn't... I mean, we will be back in the survival area, so I'm not going to spend too much time looking for it. For now, though... You know, I just kind of wanted to mention that that move tutor is around. I don't think he's got anything that I particularly want to use. Uh, so we'll actually go to the north now. So we're back on Route 226. We're going to head over to Route 227 now. So we got to go down this way. And it is a little bit... I should say, it's not weird, but it's a little bit annoying that you kind of have to navigate through all the rock climb to get back to uh, where you were. Uh, I remember this. This is where I was an idiot and stood for like two minutes waiting for the person to... I didn't actually realize that trainer would turn. Anyway, uh, so we're back down here. I will activate another repel because I know this game. It will have five wild Pokemon jump on me if I don't activate a repel. Uh, and then I believe I actually have to go this way back into the water. And here's the Meister's house. Again, don't soft lock your game. And over here to the north should be Route 227. So I guess, well, actually, it's still inaccessible no matter which way you're coming from because you either got to come from the survival area or you got to come from the. Uh, you got to come from the resort area. Anyway, this 
region also has that volcanic ash. So somehow Route 226 over there doesn't have any volcanic ash or sandstorm, even though it's surrounded by routes that do. The uh, volcanic ash just gives the place atmosphere. It does not actually affect the... Um, what's it called? The... Oh, what am I trying to say? It, it does not affect battles at all. It's not an actual weather condition. Also, I've kept Punguin out front because Punguin got cheated out of level 60 last episode, so we will fix that right here. I've got the urge to battle with you. Hope you're willing to oblige. That I am. That I am indeed. And Ace Trainer Saul over here has a Tauros. You can see it's got the custom Pokemon animation with the uh, ball seal. I really should do that at some point. Anyway, Intimidate, not going to help you because special attack. Thrash, not going to help you because I'm steel type. Although that actually did... 40 damage, which isn't terrible. I mean, Tauros has good physical attack, and Punguin is more of a specially defensive Pokemon. So, you know, that's okay. Uh, you know what? We'll use Surf again, even though it's overkill, just because uh, it actually has higher PP than, like, everything else, and I don't feel like using Waterfall. I could have used Aqua Jet if I had Aqua Jet, but I didn't. So that's my fault. Anyway, there you go. There's your level 60 Punguin. About time, and I'm sorry that you didn't get that in the last episode. Punguin is now the first Pokemon that we have uh, to grow to level 60. Congratulations. Let me actually now switch Juniper to the front, because Juniper is the lowest level Pokemon we have in general. Do not jump down that ledge and go here. Uh, oh wait, are you a bird keeper? Did I just do something very silly? Um, the concrete jungle, huh? That's cities, so I guess that's... I, I kind of do like the expression concrete jungle to refer to uh, cities. Oh, well, you are a flying type user, but it's also a part grass type. Uh, Megahorn or Stone Edge? Megahorn will do neutral damage, but has same, ty same type attack bonus. Stone Edge will do super effective damage. You know what? Stone Edge. Why not? Both are inaccurate moves. Uh, yeah, so there's Stone Edge. Should take care of Skip Loom. Very good. And do you have a Jump Luff? Please tell me you don't have a Jump Luff. No, a Lop Honey. Okay, well, I can deal with that, too. With close combat. Or you've got bounce and are faster than me. Alright, that is a flying type move. I will switch over to Punguin because I can and I don't want Juniper to faint. Uh, Juniper is, of course, quad weak to those flying type moves. That was a critical hit. Uh, very pathetic, but Okay, and I'm slower than you. That's lovely. There's Bounce. Just don't paralyze me. And Surf to wash you away. Probably. I, f I, I think I forget how fast La Punny is, because it can be pretty fast. Anyway, I'm going to assume that you're going to be using uh, Bounce again. There's really not much I can do about that, so I'll waste a Waterfall PP. And we'll flash cannon just to be flashy. Provided this doesn't paralyze. I'm actually surprised that it hasn't paralyzed me, to be honest. Uh, I don't remember what the percent chance of, of uh, paralysis is from bounce, but usually the AI gets incredibly lucky with those sorts of things. Anyway, Juniper doesn't quite grow a level there, but we've defeated Felicia. Hooray. Uh, jump down there. Do not jump down that ledge. And Repel's effect wore off. That's okay. I don't think I... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, what are you doing here? I think I forgot that you were here. That also answers my question about something else that I was curious about. 
What do you guys have to say for yourselves? Oh, if it isn't NG. It's been a while. You've grown so tough, you're training out here now. Everyone keeps getting tougher and tougher. And in doing that, they develop closer bonds with their Pokémon. That's my master. Those are words of wisdom. What, are you still having trouble understanding? I don't, for a second, ever recall accepting you as an apprentice. I mean, if it's wrestling moves, I can show you all you like, but... Aw, oh, master, don't be that way. You've got to get me into that club in the survival area. How'd I get involved in this? Don't... Yeah, I... <laughs> you know, Wake, I've, I've found that it's better to probably just ignore him. So anyway, Angie, you're going to Stark Mountain? Even the wild Pokémon there are very, very tough. If your Pokémon aren't well-trained, they'll have a miserable time. And again, that kind of challenge is, is an exciting prospect. But no matter what, you'd better be fully prepared. Gotta get ready for another turn. I've gotta get ready for another tournament. Farewell. And Wake goes away. You know, I think I got a little tougher again. That's why I'm off to the Battle Frontier, so I can make some challenges. Master, wait for me. And he goes running off. I forgot that you can find him there. Um, I thought you could find him somewhere else, and was a little bit confused. Anyway, what do you have to say? Oh dear, dear, are your Pokemon feeling tired? You should rest up. That's a good idea. Rest up here. Good, I'm actually glad that I didn't heal up Punguin like I was planning on, because I forgot this was here. Um, classic old lady wants me to keep resting, but my Pokemon are um, fully healed after the first one. I, I will say, I think the first time that they tried something like that, or they showed something like that, was in uh, the, the Hoenn games, Ruby, Sapphire, and, and Emerald. And I actually thought that for some reason my Pokemon didn't fully heal the first time. So I, I healed there like five or six times before it even occurred to me. Um, what was I saying? It, before it even occurred to me to check and make sure that my Pokemon were healed, I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? But anyway, over here we find this guy. You remember him. Uh, we saw him back in the fight area right after our battle with Volkner and Flint. Yo, if it isn't Engie, out, right out training right away, are you? So uh, since you're training anyway, can you do me a favor? I'd like, to, I'd like you to, to patrol Stark Mountain for me. Um, maybe not this episode. Oh. Well, okay, I don't have a choice then. Up past here, there's this volcano. It's Stark Mountain. Deep inside is is it is the special rock called the Magma Stone. I can't explain it well, but it's really important. It keeps a Pokemon asleep. Lately, I've been hearing rumors about vandals in Stark Mountain. They say goons in space suits are causing trouble there. Huh? What? Me? I was on my way to the Pokemon Center because my Pokemon's low on HP. So if you could get up to Stark Mountain now, that'd be great. Thanks. He says he's on his way to the Pokemon Center, but he doesn't actually move. And if you talk to him again... Okay, you're in charge. Patrol Stark Mountain for me. Don't worry about me. Not even a little bit, okay? I'm not worried. I barely even know ya. Anyway, some items we can grab over here. Get a yellow shard. Over there. And there's some things that we can go by getting... Or get by going this way including a trainer battle over there, but I'll grab this item instead, which is a Zinc. Uh, let's see, anything over there? No, so let's battle this trainer. Why not? The world is huge, and there are so many different Pokémon. What kinds of Pokémon are with you? Please, I want to have a look. Sure, go ahead. Take a look. They're very good Pokémon, all of them. Ace Trainer, Mikayla. Okay, you've got a Seviper. Uh, I actually have an answer to that with Heracross, which is Earthquake. Huzzah! Yes. Earthquake is a great move to have on Heracross. I mean, then again, any very powerful physical-type move is a great move to have on Heracross. So, it's, it's yeah. You gain some experience, grow to level 59. Congratulations, Juniper. A decent size growth to the physical attack. 173, nothing to sneeze at. Uh, Absol. That's absolutely fine by me. I can use Megahorn on that. 
and should be super effective. I could use close combat, but you do have one more Pokemon, and I don't want to needlessly lower my defense and special defense, just in case the last Pokemon you have is ridiculously fast and or flying and has a flying-type move. Or Persian. Okay, so I guess that does qualify as fast, although you're probably going to use, yep, Fake Out. Okay, that did something, but... Power Gem! Power Gem! Why are you using Power Gem? I mean... It's a decently powered special rock-type move, but Heracross's fighting subtype means that that's not super effective. I would hope that you have another normal-type move. You know what? It doesn't matter. Heracross wins. Hooray. Yes, my Pokemon is that wonderful. Anyway, back up over here. And we can go down here. And I think there's actually something worthwhile down here. I hope there's something worthwhile down here. Yes, there is an item. It is a charcoal, which raises the power of fire-type moves. Um, I don't have any fire-type Pokemon. I don't have any fire-type moves. I also forgot that I didn't have a repel up. Hooray. Hello, Golbat. Um, I'm gonna run away from you. Yes. Uh, no, I don't want to look at my trainer card. I want to activate a repel. I don't believe there are any other items down here. Oh! He says, as there's a hidden item literally right here, which is a Max Repel. Okay. So let's go back up. And Buck was complaining about some goons in spacesuits. That sounds suspiciously like Team Galactic. But I thought we put an end to their ridiculous... Um, Whatever it is, that their ridiculous plan for world domination. I cannot, and I will not, let this stand. Anyway, you can grab a star piece over there. Uh, so that's always nice. And then you jump down some ledges over here. Ah, Karate Men. What do I want to do? Do I want to challenge you with Heracross, or do I want to actually see. Summary. 7,700, 9,250, Gly score. Yeah, Gly score. You'll take this one. Splurb is, uh, needs a lot of experience. Splurb needs a lot of experience before growing to the next level. I have meditated under a waterfall to temper my spirit. Allow me to demonstrate its strength. If you say so, buddy. If you say so. Black Belt Griffin over here has a Breloom. Okay. Uh, that's not great, because that means that my Earthquake will do... Um, will do uh, resisted damage. But you know what? I'll go for it anyway, because why not? I never... Well, I, I suppose I do care about type matchups, but I don't want to try using a U-turn and... Well, okay, I got a critical hit. This thing... I was going to say this thing probably has Effect Spore for its ability. Uh, instead, it actually used regular Spore to put my Splurb to sleep. Uh, I wonder if you're going to be using Wake Up. Nope, 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 nope. Wake Up Slap. Um, do I have a regular Awakening? Wait a minute. I have this. That's like an infinite use. Yeah, that's that's like an infinite use everything, so I don't need... Uh, oh, Sky Opera Cut. That's great. Uh, that's resisted. And I gain back some of that HP. Leftovers is just such a good item for... for uh, Fly score. It really is. And then I should gain back a little bit of HP at the end of this turn, so battling against Breloom really didn't do much of anything to Splurb. Huzzah. 
Although that did take longer than it should have. Oh well. <laughs> I forgot that I brought in that blue flute. Anyway, Metacham over here takes normal damage from Earthquake. Uh, provided, of course, it actually lets me get that Earthquake off. But in the meantime, the only thing you're doing by stalling is letting me uh, heal, is letting Splurb heal up to full HP. So, thank you. Uh, okay, now you're just being annoying. But, whatever. Third time's the charm. And I do like this background, too. So I said in the last background, I, uh, the, the last episode that I liked the background while I was battling the trainers on the water. Uh, I like this background, too. I think it is a time of day thing, because it is, like, 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning, according to the DS clock. Um, you're gonna... Yep, I knew you were gonna do that. Then again, you could say, if I knew you were going to do that, I should have actually... Um, I, sh I should have actually not used Earthquake, but oh well. You're just spamming out my Earthquake PP, which I don't like, but I do have Lepa Berries, so... Like I said, the only thing you're doing right now is allowing me to heal off the damage you've already done. And being ever so slightly annoying. Anyway, that takes care of Metacham. Gain some more experience for that, and we've defeated Black Belt Griffin. Hachoo! Sniffle. I guess you've got a cold, huh? All that time under the waterfall. Seems I've caught a cold. That you did. And it's your own fault. Anyway, now we're here at Stark Mountain. And I think that's actually where we're going to be leaving things off for this episode. Uh, Stark Mountain has some interesting things for us, um, and it's certainly worth its own episode to explore. So, I'm going to end things off here. Uh, in the meantime, if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and of course remember to check out our forums and our Discord channel, as well as our social media channels, which are all linked in the video description. Uh, that said, I've done everything that I was planning on doing today in this episode, so I'm going to save things off here, and I will see you all next time.